Okay, um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for joining the Destination Japan session. For those of you who uh, have been joining the other session this afternoon, welcome again uh, back into the room. So today, um, as part of the uh, University Week um, of the C uh, Cambridge International uh, Destination Asia Pacific Virtual University Week, uh, this is the third uh, webinar which we are going to introduce Japan as a destination to the Cambridge International A-level students. So in today's session, you will be able to learn more details about the English degree programs um, hosted by different types of uh, Japan universities. And also we are going to give you an update of that was the experience and policy looking like uh, for study in Japan. So today we are very delighted um, to have three speakers, uh, Mr. Uh, Shimiboku from Study in Japan uh, Global Network Project Headquarter, uh, which also uh, from JSO, uh, and also uh, Ye Qingming, um, the admission coordinator from Nagoya University, as well as Daniel, uh, direct uh, regional manager from Ritsumeiken Asia Pacific University. So um, I'm Dora Duan, I'm the senior manager of recognition and policy of East Asia, and I'm based in uh, China. Today, we are going to have the presentations in about 45 minutes and leave some uh, Q&A sessions. So if you have any questions throughout the presentation, please leave them in the Q&A session. Today's session will also be recorded. Um, and thank you very much for joining us. And without saying too much, I'm going to pass the mic to Mr. Shimiboko from uh, JSO, please. Okay, good evening, everyone. I'm Kenji Shimboko of JASO, Japan Civil Services Organization. Thank you for having me today. Now I'd like to give you the basic information on studying in Japan. Okay, first of all, this is the data of international students as of May 1st, 2020. There were about 310,000 international students in 2019. But because of the pandemic of coronavirus, COVID-19, the number was decreased in 2020. But still you can see there are about 280,000 students in Japan. Just for your information, the largest number is from China, the second is Vietnam, and the th third is Nepal. What are the advantages of study in Japan? There are so many reasons to consider but I will point out five reasons today. One, world-class science and technology. Japan is proud of providing world-class education and you will benefit from the high quality education in Japan. For example, you will have the opportunity to learn cutting edge science and technology. Japan is a world leader in the field of science and has been producing Nobel Prize laureates almost every year. Of course, you can also pursue study in humanities and social sciences. Japanese higher education provides a variety of academic courses, such as arts, literature, business, law, as well as subcultural studies, including anime, manga, and others. Two, international environment. About 300,000 international students from more than 190 countries are now studying at Japanese universities, language institutes, and other schools. Studying in Japan offers you a chance to learn about the whole world. In addition, more and more Japanese institutions are offering deg degree programs in English. You will be able to pursue your studies in English and able to learn the Japanese language while living in Japan. Three, affordable academic fees. Academic fees in Japan are much lower than those of the United States or the United Kingdom. In fact, tuition at Japanese national universities is about one third of those at public universities in the United States. Four, rich, rich nature and culture. Japan is known for its rich natural environment and very distinct four seasons of spring, summer, fall, and winter. At the same time, Japan has fostered a unique culture since ancient time. 
you will enjoy the traditional Japanese culture as well as the pop culture. Five, employment in Japan. Japanese government is encouraging international students to stay and work in Japan after graduation. According to JASO survey, more than 35% of graduating international students find employment in Japan. Government agencies and universities have helped connecting international students to potential employers by providing consultation services and holding career fairs and seminars. Working in Japan can be a great opportunity to accumulate knowledge and experience that, you, that will help your dreams come true. These are five types of higher education institutions in Japan accepting international students. For advanced learning, you can obtain master's and doctoral degrees from graduate schools and bachelor degree from universities of undergraduate programs. The third is junior colleges provide practical skills put to, put, to be put to use in work after graduation, awarding associate degree. The fourth is the professional training colleges, which offer a diploma title at, upon graduation. And the fifth is the College of Technology, also known as COSEN, which offers education programs focused on lab works and practical works. Besides all these higher education institutions, there are also many international students studying Japanese language at the language institutes. Depending on the funding bodies, these higher education institutions are categorized into three types, national, local public, and private. This table shows the number of higher education institutions in Japan. Japan had 643 graduate schools, 795 universities and more than 2,700 professional training colleges. Graduate schools and universities have students mainly in humanities, social science, and engineering. On the other hand, professional training colleges attract more and more students to their popular programs such as animes and fashions. I believe you are interested in the qualification of the Cambridge International AS and A level to apply for Japanese university. Japanese government recognizes Cambridge International system as one of the methods for admittance to a Japanese universities, which means equivalent to the graduation of Japanese high schools. However, completion of the AS level only does not qualify for admission. Completion of A level is a compulsory. Besides, just in case I would like to mention that other admission qualifications such as IB, International Baccalaureate, and Arbiter are also available for, for Japanese university admission. Academic year in Japan is divided into two, into two semesters in general. Most of the schools start their academic year in April and end in March. Some courses, especially in English, English degree courses start in September or October. In recent years, growing number of universities are also introducing quota system. The language to study should be also important to you. Generally, lectures in Japanese universities are conducted in Japanese language, particularly at undergraduate level, courses like humanities, Japanese language, or history. However, Many Japanese universities provide courses in English, mainly in natural sciences. So you have options to enter Japanese universities without Japanese language proficiency. If you are applying for a course taught in English, English language proficiency is required as shown here, but please make sure to confirm the latest application guidelines of the school of your choice. As shown in slide, even if you enroll in degree taking classes in English, lear learning conversational Japanese, including letters such as hiragana and katakana will make life in Japan much easier. It will also be an advantage when looking for a job in Japan. I'm afraid to say that English conversation is not very common for Japanese citizens. Before entering to Japan, hopefully you had better learn basic Japanese. In general, lectures in Japanese universities, especially at the undergraduate level, 
are conducted in Japanese language. In order to follow the lectures, your command of Japanese language is expected to, to 200 to, to 250 points of EJU, excluding a scores of writing section or JLPT, Japanese language proficiency test of N1 or 2. Therefore, in most cases, international students study Japanese language at the language institutes in Japan before applying to universities. For, now, for one of the admission process, I'd like to introduce you briefly about EJU. EJU is one of the tests required for international students to university undergraduate, undergraduate programs. You will be required to take EJU to apply for major Japanese universities, especially for undergraduate programs. Particularly, 91% of national universities consider EJU scores in the admission process. You can see the location of EJU here. There are many locations, but it is held twice a year only, June and November. At this moment, please consider to submit application next February to take the June test next year. For the November exam, the application period will be in July. For application guidelines, syllabus, list of schools, schools using EJU, past exam questions and other related information, please check JASO website. Due to the influence of COVID-19 pandemic, please keep up for the latest information. This table shows the tuition for students who are accepted by Japanese university as a regular student. For the first year, you need to pay an addition fee in addition to the tuition. Facility and equipment fee, equipment fee, fee, fee may also be required. Please note that the academic fees in private universities depend on on majors and courses. For the living cost in Japan, the monthly average is approximately 93,000 yen, excluding academic fees, according to our survey. Living expenses in the big cities are relatively higher comparing with rural areas. With permission of a part-time job from the Immigration Bureau, international students are allowed to work up to 80, 28 hours per week. Approximately 70% of privately financed international students are working part-time, and they earn about 59,000 yen per month on average. There are two types of financial assistance for international students. One is a scholarship, and the other is a tuition exemption or reduction by each university. Today, I'd like to introduce some basic information about scholarships. Most of the scholarships become available after your, your arrival in Japan with a recommendation from your school. However, there are scholarships that you can apply before coming to Japan. Number one, Japanese government makes scholarship is a full scholarship providing monthly stipend, tuition, and round trip airfares. You can apply at the Japanese embassy. Number two, after admission or enrollment in a Japanese university, Students may apply mixed honors scholarships. Number three, just so student exchange support program is for the exchange students coming to Japan based on the, based on the ex exchange agreement between universities. And the students can apply scholarship by private foundations and local governments after admission or enrollment in a Japanese university. This is number four. The Japanese government is in encouraging international students to stay and work in Japan after graduation. As you can see in this graph, the number of international students who found employment at Japanese companies is increasing every year. There are quite a number of job fairs specially organized for international students in Japan, and each university has a career advising center to help students to find a job after graduation. Even if you are unable to find a job before graduation, you can still continue to engage in job seeking activities for one more year by obtaining a special visa with recommendation from your university. Please make use of your experience of studying Japan to work in Japan as well. If you, if you want to get further information about studying in Japan, please check Study in Japan official website. This website gives you all sorts of useful information before, during, and after studying in Japan. 
Lastly, before finishing my presentation, I'd like to make some comments for the situation of coronavirus in Japan. The number of infected people was serious this summer, like over 20,000 per day in Japan. But now the number is decreasing like 200 per day. Regarding the international students, the immigration service has been mostly suspended for a long time, but just from last week, the government officially restarted the process. There are many students who have the permission for student visa and waiting for, the, waiting for visiting Japan in their home countries. So the schools accepting them are preparing for the place to stay during quarantine and apply to the Japanese Ministry of Education for their assistance. I suppose it will take a while to get back to the normal process, but I also believe students would enter Japan gradually. Anyway, I hope to, you choose to study in Japan in near future. Thank you very much for your time and attention. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Shumaboku, for the informative um, session about study in Japan for international students. Now, my uh, invite uh, Nagoya University Chen to share with us um, from public universities' uh, point of view, what's your admission policy and international students' requirements. Thank you, Chiming. All right. Thanks, Dora, for the introduction. I'll first share my screen. All right. If you can see my screen, then we shall start. So hi, everyone. I'm Chinman from Nagoya University G30 Admissions Office. So today I'll be introducing our university, Nagoya University, and also our English taught programs. Just an overview what I'll be covering today. So we'll be talking a bit about Nagoya City, introducing our university and also the G30 International Program, the undergraduate programs we offer, campus and facilities, and also a bit about the application flow to our program. All right. So Nagoya, if it's your first time hearing about Nagoya City, we are the fourth largest city in Japan, located in between Tokyo and also Osaka. So it takes 90 minutes to Tokyo by Shinkansen, the bullet train, and 45 minutes to and fro from Osaka. So Nagoya is well known for its automobile industry, whereby Na Toyota has its main company headquarters here in Nagoya. All right. Nagoya University, so we are a Japan national university, one of the 86 national universities in Japan, founded in year 1871. Nagoya University is well known for our six Nobel Prizes in the field of chemistry and physics. So for students who are interested to pursue a science degree, it might be a good option for you. We have 10 undergraduate schools and 13 graduate schools. In terms of student population, we have more than 16,000 students on campus and 18% of our student body is international. In year 2011, we have an all English taught program. It's called Global 30 International Programs, G30 in short. So for our G30 program, all of the classes courses are taught in English. So students do not need any Japanese language skills in order to apply to our university. We do offer Japanese language classes when you arrive here in Nagoya during your first year. Our classes are small in size and average class size is 15 to 20 students in a class. Our G30 program is also research intensive, especially for the science and engineering majors, meaning that during your third year, students are encouraged to choose your research topic of interest and choose your laboratory to work on your research thesis. So first, so during your final year, you can focus on doing your experiments and also writing out your graduation thesis. And we also have a very diverse student body and international faculty here at Nagoya University and especially for our G30 program. So here are some pictures taken on campus and you can see our students during the different seasons. Okay, now let us take a look at the list of undergraduate programs that we offer. So for the programs listed here, all of the courses are taught in English. 
We offer automotive engineering and the School of Mechanical Engineering and School of Electrical Engineering. We have chemistry offered by School of Engineering and Science. Biological Sciences, it's offered by School of Science and Agricultural Sciences. Physics is offered by School of Science. Social Sciences, we have Law, Economics, and Japan in Asia Cultural Studies. So all of these programs, once again, it's offered in English. So when you apply, you do not need any Japanese language skills when you apply to the program. International Outreach. So for Nagoya University, we currently have agreements with 466 international institutions. So for students who are interested to study abroad, we offer six to one year opportunity for students to study abroad. And our current G30 students, they usually choose to study abroad either during their second year or third year of undergraduate studies. We also have a list of our uh, partner institutions on our website. So if you're interested, feel free to check it out. Okay, in terms of campus, Nagoya University, we have three campuses. G30 program, we are located on the main campus known as Higashiyama Main Campus. So we have a subway station on campus, so it's very convenient for students who, would, who are staying off campus to arrive at university. We have a few cafeterias and cafes on campus and a few school gyms as well. Okay. So for students who are interested to find out about accommodation, especially if you are coming as a first year student, we do have an international student dorm. It's called this Ishida Memorial Myoken dorm for our first year students. So this is a layout of the dorm. It's fully furnished. There's a big table chest. You get a refrigerator, microwave oven. You have a IH cooker. And also there is an attached bathroom. So. Most of our G30 first year students, they stay in this international student dorm. And we also listed the cost of the dorm here. And the internet is also provided in each room. So we have a few more pictures. This is how the dorm looks like. This is the common area, the study room, and also the common area where our students usually, they cook and they eat together. And also they can do their assignments together after their classes. So some pictures of how the room looks like. In terms of student support here at Nagoya University, we offer our students, especially international students with various support. Academic advisor. So during your four years of undergraduate studies, each student will be assigned to an academic advisor who will be there to assist you if you have any questions regarding academics or personal life. We also have a very unique tutor system available for our first year and second year students. So your tutor will either be someone from your same country or your same major. And if you need help with easing your transition to Japan, your tutor will be there to help you. We also have career services office that provides students with information regarding internships and job hunting process if you would like to work in Japan after graduation. We also offer counseling services on campus and we prepare our students well with life skills and also offer Japanese cultural opportunities for international students to get to know Japanese culture. So previously we have organized various flower arrangement sessions, kimono wearing sessions and tea ceremony sessions for our students to experience Japanese culture. So just a bit about the cost studying here at Nagoya University. There are two one-time payment that you have to pay, which is the application fee and registration fee. We estimated the annual tuition fee here for you. Monthly rent, Nagoya, it's not as big, not a very big city compared to Tokyo and Osaka. So the monthly rent is still quite affordable. It's between 30 to 50,000 yen. We also listed down the monthly expenses that students have to budget if you're planning to study in Japan. All right, so if you're interested to apply for scholarships, we do have various scholarships available at our university. The Nagoya University G30 Undergraduate Scholarship. So this scholarship, it includes your four-year tuition fee, reimbursement of your registration fee, and also it provides an annual stipend. Apart from the G30 scholarship, there is also government scholarship, tuition waiver scheme, and also private scholarships available for students to apply after you arrive here in Nagoya University. Students are also allowed to do part-time job in Japan up to 28 hours per week. 
online, all our applications can be done online. As you can see, there is a QR code here. It has our latest admissions requirements. So if you're interested, you can scan this QR code to check out our latest admissions requirements. If you are planning to apply to our program and wondering what subject requirements we have, so here's a list of subject requirements we have and suggestions basically for students. If you're interested to apply to a specific program or major, you can take a look at our subject requirements. Okay, just a quick overview about the application flow. It starts with an online application and our first round application started last week, November 11, and it ends on the 10th of December. So if you are interested to apply, feel free to take note of the deadlines. We have first round and second round applications, but depending on the program that you apply for, some programs are only op open for first round application. So we listed the list of documents that we require from you, a graduation proof for last for transcript, the last two years of transcript. So if you are taking A-levels, we require you to submit AS, your AS results and also your predicted grades. So we are able to grade and also screen your application based on your AS results and also your predicted grades. And we offer an unconditional offer based on the documents that you provide. We also need students to submit two essays. So the essay topics will be listed in the admissions requirements. So feel free to check it out. In terms of recommendation letters as well, we require two recommendation letters. English proficiency test, if you have attended a high school whereby the media of instruction is in English over the past four years, you do not need to submit English proficiency test. Standardized tests such as SAT, ACT, it is not compulsory for our university. But if you have taken the test and you think your test results is okay, it's good, we suggest you to submit your test results. If you pass the first round of online application screening, you'll be invited for an interview. It'll be online, 45 minutes for School of Engineering and Science, 30 minutes for Economics, Law and JACS. So for the interview, usually students will be asked major related questions why you're interested to apply for the program, why this university, and also what are you interested in the program that you're applying for. Admissions offer, it will be announced at the same time as the scholarship results. So for the G30 scholarship, as I mentioned previously, um, there is no separate application. All students who apply to our G30 program are considered for the G30 scholarship if you'd like to apply for the scholarship. During the whole application process, you do not have to travel to Japan. Okay, so in terms of admissions requirements, we always receive questions from students. What is the suggested score or what are the suggested subjects that we should apply uh, that we need to apply to your program? So we have it here on our admissions requirements. Feel free to check it out. If you are taking A-levels, it's under the British system. Next slide, it's uh, something to take note of in terms of recommendation letters. Depending on the program that you're applying for, we do have subject area requirement from your referee, so feel free to check it out. Most of the programs, we require a specific subject referee, but for the social science subjects as listed here, we do not require a specific subject area from your referee. All right, so career path, if you're wondering where our alumni continue after their graduation. More than 50% of our alumni choose to continue to graduate school, either in Japan or outside of Japan. 31% of our graduates choose to do graduate school in Japan, either in Nagoya University or other universities in Japan. 24% of our students choose to pursue their master's and PhD abroad. So either the US, the UK, Europe, Canada, Australia is quite popular among our students as well. We also have students who choose to work in Japan after graduation, around 19% of our students. So this is the list of the companies where our students are working in. Just a bit of an update about the current COVID-19 situation. As mentioned, um, we have good news that Early November, our, the Japanese government has announced that international students can now enter to Japan. So that's good news for the universities as well. We look forward to meeting our students soon. Vaccination rate in Japan is over 70% now. So, And currently at Nagoya University, we provide vaccination for our students. 
and our classes are now hybrid mode. For students who are not here in Japan yet, the classes are online. But for students who are already in Japan, especially for our second, third year students, classes are already in person. So that is something for students to take note in regards to the COVID-19 situation. So that's all for my session, sharing session today. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you very much, Chaiming. I have seen uh, some questions are coming up, but before we're taking them, uh, we would like to invite another uh, university, the Asia Pacific, uh, Asia Pacific University, to share with you some um, from the other angle, a uh, private university, uh, what's their uh, international students' experiences and offers over there. And then if you have any questions for uh, even JSO or to Nagoya University, please feel free to leave them in the Q&A session. We will take them uh, after the uh, last presentation from Daniel. So Daniel, please. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Daniel from Litsumeikan Asia Pacific University. Uh, we go by APU for short. Uh, we are a private university located in the southern part of Japan. So I will give a quick overview of our university. This is a picture of our campus. We are located on a small mountain overlooking the city and bay down below. So a very beautiful view on a very uh, sunny day. So we are about a mid-sized university. So we have about 6,000 students uh, studying at APU. Roughly half of our students are international students. Our students are currently represented by 95 different countries and regions from around the world. Um, not only our students, but our also our faculty is also roughly half international. So at APU, students will be studying in this very unique multicultural environment and be able to gain a very global perspective while being based in Japan. We are a relatively new university. We were established in the year 2000 by the Ritsumeikan Trust, which has a very long uh, history in Japan. They also own the Ritsumeikan University in Kyoto, um, but we are two separate universities. Uh, some people get our universities uh, mixed up, but again, uh, we are two separate universities, uh, both owned by the Ritsumeikan Trust, Educational Trust. So we were established in the year 2000 as, a, as Japan's, one of Japan's first truly internationally focused universities. But in our short history, we have definitely achieved a lot. So again, we are a private university. In Japan, there are around uh, 600 private universities in total. Um, but this year, we are ranked uh, number one among private universities located outside of Tokyo and uh, number five among private universities nationally. In the Times Higher Education, Japan University rankings for 2021. And we have a few other achievements that we have, gained, we have achieved over the years on this slide as well. At APU, our classes are taught in both English and Japanese, so you can choose which language to study in. Uh, most of our international students choose to study in English and enter as an English medium student. In that case, uh, you do not need to know any Japanese to apply and enter the university. Uh, but once you enter, uh, you're still required to study the Japanese language, at least until the intermediate level. Um, after that, um, it's up to you whether to continue studying Japanese or not. Many of our students choose to study um, Japanese. We offer various levels of Japanese all the way to advance and career Japanese for finding and working in Japan after graduation. So many of our students are be able to become very proficient in Japanese by the time they graduate. In addition, we also offer six other foreign languages. So many of our students are able to become multilingual in various language languages as well. We currently offer two different undergraduate programs at APU. One is the College of Asia Pacific Studies, which is a social science program. There are four different areas that students can choose to specialize in. They are listed here. And we also offer the College of International Management, which is a BBA program. And there are also four different areas that students can choose to specialize in. Our APM program is accredited by AACSB, but is considered to be one of the top international business school accredit accreditations in the world. And we are one of two universities in Japan that offers an undergraduate business program that is taught in English uh, that is AACSB accredited. 
And so having this accreditation uh, guarantees that uh, we meet the international standards for business education and offers many uh, opportunities for uh, collaboration with other AACSB universities around the world. Our classes at APU are known to incorporate what we call multicultural cooperative learning. So there's lots of interactive discussions and group work done in multicultural work, group, multicultural groups. So we encourage our students to not only um, share their own ideas and perspectives, but really be able to learn from each other as well. We also offer various uh, opportunities to gain additional international experience um, in other parts of the world and other parts of Japan as well. For example, we offer uh, half year or year long semester programs at um, over 150 uh, exchange program partner universities uh, around the world. We also offer short term programs, including field studies, internships, and language, language immersion programs. In addition, we also offer three different dual degree programs as well. Our students at APU are known to be very active. Uh, both on and off campus. So there are many opportunities for our students to, gain, uh, to get involved in. For example, we offer 110, over 110 different student-led organizations. Our students organize different activities and events throughout the year. And our students are also very active as student staff for supporting their other, supporting other uh, students. So there's many opportunities to get involved to support, uh, provide peer support to other students on campus as well. Our students are also known to be very successful after they graduate. Um, we, have, we also have a career office on campus that supports our students with their post-graduation plans. Each year, our, um, over 250 companies and organizations come directly to our campus or are currently online to recruit our students directly. So our students are known to have a lot of qualities that many companies are looking for, um, including the language skills and the global perspective. These are just a few examples of where our students have found employment after um, they have graduated, and also uh, examples of where our students have gone on to graduate school. So as you can see, many opportunities available in not only in Japan, but all over the world as well. Okay, a little bit more about where we are located. So again, we are located in the southern part of Japan in the city of Beppu. Um, it's a mid-sized city of around 120,000 people and about an hour and a half flight from Tokyo. Beppu is known for its warm and welcoming community, so there are many opportunities to interact with local uh, people and really uh, immerse yourself in the local uh, culture and community. Beppu itself is very famous in Japan um, as a tourist destination because we have the most amount of hot spring water in all of Japan. Um, so there are many hot springs all over the city. So even as a student, you can enjoy the hot springs anytime as you want. These are just a few uh, other pictures of our, the city of Beppu. So we're located right next to the bay and surrounded by mountains. So really beautiful natural environments. And as with, as with other parts of Japan, you can experience all four seasons throughout the year. All first year international students uh, live on campus on our on-campus housing facility called AP House. Um, we have both single and shared rooms. And on each floor, we have residential assistants who are senior students who look after the, after the new students and they organize various events and activities for students to get to know each other and also to get uh, adjust um, to the new Japanese uh, culture as well. Uh, from the second year onwards, students find a, uh, live off campus in private accommodation, um, but it's very fine. It's very easy to find apartments. Um, we provide we have a company on campus that supports our students for finding accommodation off campus. And these are just the layout of both the single and shared rooms. Uh, for students who are in our shared rooms, you'll be paired with a Japanese roommate. So it's a great way to make a Japanese friend from the very beginning and uh, practice your Japanese and share each other's cultures. All international applicants can apply for our tuition reduction scholarship at the time of application. Uh, this is a reduction on your tuition ranging from 50% to 100% reduction. Again, you can apply for this at the time you applied APU 
and you'll get your results at the same time as your admissions results. The scholarship is based on a holistic evaluation of the entire application uh, process, which we'll talk about after this. And if you receive the scholarship, it will be valid for the, the period until graduation. After you enroll, um, you can also apply to additional scholarships, which are provided by the university and other various organizations and companies. The majority of these scholarships are merit-based. Uh, the slide here um, is a summary of the approximate cost of attendance for the first year. Um, we have the tuition on the first row. So uh, this is the full tuition um, if you do not receive a tuition reduction scholarship. Uh, but again, the tuition that you'll have to pay will depend on the tuition reduction scholarship amount that you receive. There's also a one-time admissions fee that you need to pay uh, once you enroll. And the cost of living, um, this is probably the maximum amount that you'll need to pay, but it really depends on each student's lifestyle. Okay, I will quickly go over the application process. Um, just to let you know, I'll be mainly focusing on how to apply as an international applicant. Uh, for any students who have Japanese, including dual Japanese uh, citizenship, uh, there's a separate application process. And further inf complete information uh, regarding this can be found on this additional website, apu.net. So please uh, look at that website for complete details. Again, I'll be going over uh, the application process for what we call international applicants. So you can complete your application entirely online. Um, complete details can be found our, on our admissions website. Um, the first part is completing the online application. So you'll need to complete the application form and upload the required documents. You'll also need to pay the application fee, which is about 45 US dollars. There's also an online assessment, which takes about an hour to complete. There are three sections in the assessment. Uh, there's a short video interview and a critical thinking and core abilities assessment. Um, you'll need to make sure to complete this assessment um, by the time of, by the application deadline. And for students who will be uh, applying for the tuition reduction scholarship, there's also an additional 20 minute uh, online interview connected to over Zoom. So a summary of the main ac uh, application documents required. There are four short essays, each 200 words long, you will need to upload your academic transcripts. A language proficiency score, um, an English language proficiency score is only required if um, you have not been studying in English for the most recent three years. So for those who have been studying in English for the, three, for the recent three years, you'll be exempt for having to submit a language score. Um, you also need to submit one recommendation letter. And there's also a section in the application to write down the extracurricular activities that you've been involved in. Uh, for students uh, doing their A-levels, um, we require a minimum of two subjects, um, but three is usually recommended. Um, we do accept the AS levels as well, um, for that uh, a minimum of four subjects. For the A-levels, we do accept the uh, predicted scores as well. We don't, we don't have a minimum requirement, um, and uh, the A-level scores are, um, the, the, your results um, will be unconditional. We do accept other curriculums, uh, international curriculums, including IB, SAT, ACT, and HKDSC as well. We have both April and September intake at APU. Um, just for your reference, um, the, the application deadline, the application period listed here is for the, our general application period. Uh, for applicants who will be applying from mainland China, uh, Indi India, Indonesia, Thailand, and Vietnam, there's a separate application uh, period uh, schedule. So please go to our admissions website for complete details. For, for any students, so will be applying for any other part of the world. Um, these are our deadlines. Um, we do have, uh, we will be having a short, um, we will be opening up a uh, application period for April, 2022 intake for anyone who is not uh, still looking first place at a university. Uh, that will open uh, from the November 18th to the 31st. But for September, September 2022 intake, um, our application period is currently open and the final deadline will be March 23rd. Again, complete details can be found on our admissions website. In terms of how we're responding to COVID-19, um, as with other universities, uh, we currently offer both online and hybrid classes. 
Um, so, and for any students who have not been able to enter Japan, they have been able to uh, defer their admissions for up to a year. And we'll be releasing the uh, exact details of um, the entry requirements uh, next week. Um, but for last year, uh, students had to complete a quarantine, quarantine period uh, in Tokyo first uh, before coming to APU. But the uh, accommodation fee uh, for this quarantine was entirely covered by APU. So it will be the same situation for this year as well. Again, uh, exact details uh, can be found on our, business, on, our, on our official AP website. And also on, um, we have several YouTube videos that explain our current situation on campus as well. So we encourage you to check them out. Uh, we are very active on social media. So please follow us on our different uh, social media accounts, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok for different videos and photos of our campus and our students. And that was a very quick overview of APU. Again, uh, the complete, complete details can be found on our missions website. Um, but thank you very much for this, listening to my presentation. Thank you very much, Daniel, and uh, for all the um, questions. We have um, seen a few questions uh, coming through and we'd like to um, pick some of them and for all the speakers, um, uh, maybe to give your uh, answers or views on it. Um, the first one I think is a very good uh, or interesting one is um, about A-level students with good scores. Um, could they get an advanced credit? So um, that means can they waive some of their courses or classes with either APU or Nagoya or maybe the other um, possible universities? Is, is, that the, is that some practice with the Japan higher education system? Now, um, maybe Chiming, uh, could you give your okay. um, answers from Nagoya side? Yeah, yeah, Thank I you. probably would be able to provide some answers from Nagoya University. So unfortunately for Nagoya University, we do not have a credit transfer system. So we do not allow credits transfer from either A-levels or IB into our university. So I think most universities in Japan does that. So yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's the same for APU as well. And as uh, Chima mentioned, I believe um, this is the same for most universities in Japan. Uh, Mr. Shinboku, if you have anything to add, please go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not quite sure about that, thing, that kind of information, but uh, I guess as Chima said, uh, I think very few universities do like that kind of credit. Yeah, I okay. think so. Yeah. Thank you very much. So um, yes, um, as explained from Nagoya and APU that um, credit transfer is not a common practice in the Japanese higher education system, unlike um, some of the other um, uh, national uh, higher education system. But um, both in, uh, Nagoya and MP APU have said uh, they will have merit-based uh, scholarship opportunities. So if you have very good uh, standing out A-level results, they will, you will be considered uh, for scholarship, but not uh, there is no credit transfer um, policies with both universities. And um, another um, common question being raised is about Japanese. So I think there are two um, questions um, similarly about um, do they, do they first, uh, does the international students have to have um, Japanese um, uh, in order to study with both universities? And uh, maybe from three of you, you can share your comments or your suggestions to the prospect students. Yeah. Shaming? <laughs> okay, I guess I can go first. So in terms of Japanese language, we do not need students to require any Japanese language skills when you apply. So during your application system, we'll base it based on your transcripts and your English language skills. But we do offer Japanese language classes during first year. For Nagoya University G30 program, it's compulsory for first year. If you do not know any Japanese language skills, you have to take um, yeah, one year of Japanese language classes, which offers the most basic classes for Japanese language. So from second, second year onwards, it's optional. If you choose to further pursue 
your Japanese language skills, you can take more classes and it's offered on campus. Yeah. Okay. Daniel? Yes, for APU, um, if you will be applying for our English medium programs, then Japanese language is not required. Um, we do also offer a Japanese medium program. If students apply for that program, then Japanese is required. But most, again, uh, most of our students, international students, apply as an English medium student. In that case, uh, Japanese is not required. We just uh, evaluate, evaluate you based on your English proficiency. Um, but again, once you enter, um, you are required to study Japanese um, during the first year, at least until intermediate level. So we offer a very intensive uh, Japanese language program during the first year. And after that, it's optional. But again, many of our students do uh, continue uh, studying Japanese. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Shimibuku, uh, maybe from your side, what's your suggestion? Yes, uh, I suggest that, as I said on the, the presentation, I suggest to Yes, study some basic Japanese first before coming to Japan. It, it will be very, very helpful, not only for study, but to, just to live in Japan, I would say. Yeah, thank you very much. So um, uh, I suppose um, universities um, suggested um, for the English degree program in Japan, normally um, the universities will, will not require you to provide any pr approval of Japanese language. But um, in order to uh, have a better living and um, better experience with the Japanese culture, um, you would be suggested or uh, it would be great to have some basic of the understanding of the language that will uh, extreme or give you a be much better experience with the country and with the culture. Um, another um, question, um, if possible, can I raise to Mr. Uh, Shimbuku is about um, you have mentioned that there are six universities offers post uh, a graduate study in English program. Um, so where can we find them? Or in general, um, for this kind of English degree program, post uh, a graduate program, uh, where can uh, post uh, pro prospect students find the uh, the information? Yes. Okay. Uh, I would say the. Uh... Yes, we have that kind of many kind of information in the uh, our presentation. I said the uh, I'm sorry. Oh. We have the website studying Japan official website that uh, we have all that kind of information. Please check. Oh, so I'm sorry. I I will go in through the uh, last part. I'm sorry. Oh. Is it, yes, for like yes, please please check the few QR code. Yes, um, use as I think you can see the uh, website of studying Japan, and uh, from this website you can check the like the search for the major uh, the university by the majors or something. So I think this website will, would be very useful. It, Definitely. It, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, so uh, please um, try this uh, website as suggested by Mr. Shimiboko, um, uh, because there are a lot of other English degree programs and the postgraduate programs, uh, which you might be interested at. Uh, for further information, please check the website. And um, um, there is another question uh, for letter of recommendation. So um, for both universities, you have mentioned there will be required letter of recommendations. So what's um, what do you uh, expecting the letter of recommendations coming from? From the class teacher, subject teacher, from the counselors, um, the school heads, or from other um, um, other part, um, maybe work uh, is also uh, uh, helpful. Okay, so in terms of recommendation letters, we require it from subject teachers, ideally. So we have it in our admissions requirements for certain programs that you apply for. We do need a specific um, subject area that your referee taught you in. For example, if you're planning to apply to a chemistry program, so one of your, uh, your referee has to be your chemistry teacher in your high school. 
So, but for our social sciences, such as law, economics, and also Jack's program, we do not have a specific requirement. So in this case, we would highly recommend you to find a teacher that you are close to, who knows you the most academically or things you do for extracurricular activities that can write for you in terms of recommendation letters. Yeah, okay. hope it answers to your question. Thank you. How about Daniel? Um, what's your suggestion for letter of recommendation? Uh, for APU, uh, we accept uh, letters uh, written by um, an instructor. Uh, this includes counselors as well. Uh, that has from your institution, your school that has known you for at least half a year. Um, we also accept recommendation letters from uh, supervisors of any internships that you have completed. Um, those are the two um, people, <laughs> uh, categories of people that we rec uh, accept recommendation letters from. So in most cases, uh, students will receive a uh, letter from their teacher or counselor. Okay, thank you. Uh, I know both of you have mentioned this, but um, because I think this is a kind of a key information, my ask it again is, um, so for A-level students, um, the international students normally will be graduating in July and they receive their final score in August. Um, is that, are they eligible to apply for your um, September enrollment or they have to uh, wait until April uh, enrollment uh, if you are having the offer or what's, what's your policy for this? Thank you. Okay, thank you for the question. So for in terms of A-levels, if your result is out in August, but you would like to enter university in the same year, October or either September, we actually accept your AS results when you apply. So you can submit your AS results and your predicted grades to us and based on the results and also your other documents that you submit, we will provide you with an unconditional offer. APU, please. Uh, for APU, uh, it's the same as uh, Nagoya University. So you can also apply using your AS levels and also your predicted scores. So again, you can apply for September intake and not wait until the following year. Thank you very much both. Yes, um, that's very helpful information uh, for the um, audience today. And my last question um, is um, maybe for Mr. Shumuboku. It's about working part-time. Um, so as you explained, um, students are allowed to working part-time uh, in Japan with, while they are taking their undergraduate. Uh, courses. So how much can they get? Um, is there a standard or um, wage for the students? Um, can, can you give some basic information on that one? So you mean the uh, like the, the wage in uh, our or something? Yes, hourly wage or um, I think they can. Uh, yes, it, it really depends on the uh, wages, but the, I think the minimum should be like 1,000 or something uh, it depends on the prefectures i the minimum is depending by prefecture but uh, like the i would say well if you like if you work or, or, or like a restaurant it, it would be like a, a little bit more than 1000 or if you have the op op opportunity it, like uh, teaching someone it would be much higher but it, it actually the, uh, the permission would be to up to 28 per hours per week. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so that's very helpful. And um, I, I hope they can also get um, this kind of information in the study in Japan website as well. Yes, of course. Yes, yes. okay. So please visit the study in Japan uh, website um, if you would like to learn more about study in Japan opportunities. So I think, um, sorry, uh, I, there are still some questions to leave here, but uh, we don't have enough time to take all of them. But uh, I said, please, um, if you are interested at learning um, in Japan, please uh, visit study in Japan uh, for more basic information. If you are uh, interested at study with uh, Asia Pacific University or uh, Nagoya University, please feel free to visit both of their uh, website for uh, most up 
updated information. Also, both of them will be attending the rest of the uh, virtual university week as well. So please feel free to visit their booths. Um, so there are more information over there as well. Also, I think um, uh, Rita Sumekan is also going to join the uh, consultation hours. Um, so please feel free to visit their booths directly and raise your questions directly to them. Um, so um, thank you very much. I hope today's session gave you a taste of study in Japan and um, that will open a fresh new door for you and your students uh, to study and um, experience the unique culture and to have the uh, very good uh, study uh, experience uh, in Japan. And for the rest of the week, uh, please stay with us tomorrow. We still have two sessions, uh, Destination Singapore and Destination Malaysia. And for the day after, we also have on Thursday, we also have a, a Destination China and Destination Hong Kong. So um, we are offering a, a different uh, tastes of study uh, with uh, Asia Pacific. Thank you very, very much for joining us uh, from different parts of the world. Good evening, uh, good morning, good afternoon, uh, wherever you're based and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, bye. And thank you very much for, for the speakers as well. Thank you for your thank time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.